What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here and I want to show you the operating system of the Kindle Fire. The just released $200 tablet from Amazon. There's a lot to like here and there's some little quirks. Let me go ahead and give you a tour of what you can expect when you pick up your Amazon Kindle Fire. Once you go through the original setup process, this is a home screen that you're going to see quite a bit as you go through and use your fire. So I'll start from the top and work my way down. Uh, first, there are no physical buttons around the bezel. There isn't a gesture area, so swiping up isn't going to do anything. Uh, no matter how much this looks like a BlackBerry playbook, it's not running QNX. It's running a modified version of Android 2.3. So in the upper right-hand corner, you're going to have settings. If you select that, you get a ton of different setting options, including unlocked, volume, brightness, Wi-Fi, sync, very easy toggles, and then you get more, which will take you into a pretty familiar looking array of Android options here, sound, display, security, my account, and the rest. At the bottom, you've got a back arrow, which will take you just one step back, or you have a home button, which will just go ahead and take you home. Right below that, you've got search, and that will search for web or uh, applications that you've got on your Kindle Fire. And there you can see the keyboard, uh, which of course can be rotated using the built-in accelerometer. Uh, looks relatively stock Android, a little bit of a skin on top of it, but the keyboard should be very familiar to anybody uh, who's ever used an on-screen keyboard. All right, so let's go ahead and go back, hit cancel. Now we've got um, where all the action happens. So you've got an array of words across the top showing you what you can do with your Kindle Fire. Newsstand books, music, video docs, apps, and web. So let's go ahead and start with Newsstand. And that's where all your magazines are going to live, if you have any. You can view um, stuff that's in the cloud, so you can download directly to your device, or you can view it by device if you already have it stored locally. Or you can jump right into the store and go ahead and get browsing. And you can see all the different options that you've got here uh, ranging in price. You've got newspapers, magazines. So let's say we want to look on the car guy. There's something on Ford and Motor Trend. Take a look at it. All right, if I want to you know, buy this, can see what the current issue price is, um, one cent uh, or a monthly price of 99 cents. You can see some reviews um, and you can choose whether or not you want to purchase. So I'll go ahead and we'll jump back and those will all show up here on the bookshelf. We'll go ahead and jump back again. Let's go ahead and jump into books. This is a Kindle after all, so it's got to well, be pretty good in the book department. Uh, let me go ahead and show you what it looks like when you are reading. So you've got all your books here displayed again on the shelves, and you can pick whatever one uh, you want to read. Let's go ahead and say, I um, want to read the Steve Jobs biography. So it's going to go ahead and open up, sync back where I was. The Mac is born, and all of the menu options at the bottom disappear. Now you can sort of sit here and do your reading. A few options here as well. You notice that those menu options I mentioned disappeared. If you want to bring them back, tap in the middle of the screen and they all show up back here. So you've got your back button. If you want to do some setting changes, you can pick the size of the font, line spacing if you like a little bit more, margins. Uh, you can change the color mode if you like the black text on white, white text on black, or a bit of more of a neutral color. You can go ahead and select that right there. If you want to mess around with typeface and find one that's best for your eyes, you can do that here as well. So we'll go ahead and jump back. Otherwise, the reading experience is pretty standard Kindle, uh, as you'd expect if you use the Kindle app on an Android tablet or an iPad, or something with a larger screen, it's going to be very, very familiar to you. All right, let's go ahead and jump home, and we'll continue the tour here. Um, so while you're in books, of course, you'll have access to the bookstore. It's what Amazon's really known for, or one of the many things Amazon's known for, and you can go ahead and browse books. And it's set up pretty similar to uh, the other Kindles. You can go ahead and see children's books and all kinds of other uh, stuff here as you want to browse the bookstore. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit home, and we'll continue to music. This has support, oops, jumped the gun. Uh, this has support for, of course, Amazon Music and all the Prime stuff that you get and like. So if you had all your music, it would show up here. We'll go ahead and jump into the store, and you can see what that looks like, and all the music that you could buy from Amazon.com, one of their great uh, music stores. You can do that right here as well. And of course, when you buy something on a computer, you'll be able to download it uh, from the cloud here as well. So it'll keep all your information sunk or synced. But go ahead and do that right here. If you want to get your Bieber on, uh, you can go ahead and buy that album for six bucks. Go ahead and go back. We will jump home. Let's go ahead and take a look at video. 
Uh, this is, of course, a multimedia tablet. Uh, you're going to get one free month of Amazon Prime membership. And what Prime is going to give you in addition to two-day shipping, free two-day shipping, which can become really addicting, get access to a ton of free streaming video. So you can see movies that you can rent or buy or TV shows. But I mentioned that Prime stuff, so I'll go ahead and hit View All to give you some of their streaming options. So I was checking the quality of Super Troopers. Let's go ahead and launch Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Go ahead and hit Watch Now, and you'll see that it'll start to load and buffer. Music is going to come out of those two speakers at the top. And you can see what video quality is going to look like, or at least what video quality is going to look like from the camera to the tablet to getting uploaded. Uh, and we're still loading. Uh, and this was really hit or miss. Um, I tried launching uh, two separate videos, Super Troopers being one of them, and it loaded very quickly. Tried to load it again, not so quickly. So perhaps the servers are being bogged down. Um, but you can see that this is definitely an issue. So we'll go ahead and exit to the home screen here. When it does work, a uh, video looks pretty nice. So I'll go ahead and realign things here. Okay, just hit the power button. There we go, slide to unlock. All right, so now we're back um, to the main screen. We just tried to show video. Uh, it didn't work according to plan, um, but such is life. So we're we'll going to jump into Docs. You can take a look at whatever documents you have here. So there's my Kindle Fire user's manual. Reading that's going to be pretty standard to reading a book. Scroll through. Uh, no pinch to zoom in the book. If you want to get back to the menu, hit the middle of the screen and go ahead and go home. So there is documents. We'll head back one more time and we'll jump into apps. And apps is kind of interesting. This is an Android based tablet, but it's not using the Android, the usual Android based ecosystem. Uh, it's using Amazon's own, well, just called App Store. And while it doesn't have as many apps as the traditional Android market, there are a decent number of choices here. Uh, so here are the ones that are going to come standard on your Kindle. Uh, there's a lot to like here. Gallery for your images, email, uh, comics. So you do have a native email application that's going to come on the device, even though it's not the traditional Gmail one that you might have seen with other Android devices. Of course, Amazon Shop. You have access to Amazon's entire store, uh, not just for digital goods, but physical goods that you want shipped to you. Uh, ESPN, Pandora, Weather Channel, Words with Friends. While there aren't that many apps here, most of the apps that you're going to want to, to get are the most common ones you'll be able to find. And if you can't find the ones that you want, usually there'll be some sort of substitute. You might have to do some digging here, but um, you will eventually find them. You can see what it looks like. And there are quite a bit of apps, and it'll just charge your Amazon account. So Hulu Plus uh, will live there. So there's that uh, option as well. Jump back into library. Library. Uh, let me show you Amazon Shop, um, just to show you what Amazon.com looks like on here. Essentially, you can go ahead and just buy stuff, uh, whatever you would like. And you've got full access to the store. So will go ahead and jump back. And let's go ahead and take a look at the web. There's been a lot of uh, fuss made over the web browser here. Amazon's calling it their Silk browser. It's got some server-side rendering to supposedly make a faster uh, browsing experience. In my limited use thus far, and I want to continue testing it to sort of back this up, I haven't really noticed much of a speed difference over other tablets. Um, let's go ahead and go to technobuffalo.com. All right, so here we are on technobuffalo.com. You can see the scrolling on here. Uh, pinch to zoom is present. Works just about as well as you'd expect. Uh, text is a little bit small to read. You're going to have to find yourself pinching and zooming a lot, especially evident on a 7-inch display. But it does look relatively crisp, despite its not incredibly high resolution of 1024 by 600. Go ahead and close out of that. And you can go ahead and just browse websites as you would anywhere. Um, I haven't seen any checkerboard pattern. It does sort of, the kinetic scrolling just sort of keeps going. Uh, you got to sort of tap it to stop. But the browser works fine. Pretty typical options uh, that you get on most browsers. You've got tabs across the top. You can see the favicons there. There's your address bar to type in what you're looking for. Um, you've got some bookmark options at the bottom to uh, take a look at different sites. If you want to add bookmarks, you can go ahead and do that there as well. See all of your um, open tabs or bookmarks here and jump to the one that you'd like. Again, I'll do a bit more review on this uh, in the browser as I get to use the tablet a bit more. So that takes us to the middle here, uh, which is a carousel of everything that you've recently viewed. Uh, I haven't found a way to remove anything from here. So whether you view a video or a comic book or whatever, it's going to show up here. It's going to show up here right at the beginning. So if you're looking at content or a website that you don't want folks to see, 
you know, you might want to be a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little bit careful or exercise some discretion um, as you go ahead and scroll through and you can sort of jump into whatever you'd like. Down below, this is where you can put your favorites and you can make this a little bit bigger or smaller if you want. You can remove stuff from here if you just tap it, remove from favorites and you can select applications and put them in there. Of course, you've got a Facebook application, but you've got a pretty good web browser, so why use an app when you can just use the web browser? Um, so you can see what those choices are there as well. And as you sort of go through, you get all those you know, different options for what you've most recently looked at. And there's a ton of them. Uh, it's pretty smooth, actually. I was in some pre-release videos that I've seen. It looked a little bit uh, choppy and laggy. Uh, not so. It's been keeping up with mostly what it wanted to do. Uh, with that one exception, we saw a video um, sort of stalling. But I have had video play on this, and it did look pretty good. Um, certainly, you know, good enough to watch on a plane or something, or if you want to just chill and watch a TV show, uh, you're going to be able to do that here on the Kindle Fire. Uh, so again, keep in mind, this is a $200 tablet. Um, so this is a much lower price point than you know, most of the other tablets on the market. Uh, 8 gigs of internal storage. There isn't any option for a micro SD here. So for all of your Kindle Fire coverage, we'll have a ton more coming up, including some verses and some more demonstration. Uh, be sure to check back technobuffalo.com, the one-stop shop for all your tech news. I'm John Rettinger, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.